Actually, the biggest thing I learned about farming was at uh, Officer Cadet School in New Zealand uh, and it's uh, seven fundamental principles of modern warfare. Now, one of them is this thing called economy of effort. Basically, it's being lazy. If you expend less resources than your enemy, you'll win. Like, I mean, if it's cold and you need to dig a foxhole, if you can just put some C4 in the ground and blow a hole in the ground, obviously your soldiers are gonna be getting more rest uh, than someone that's digging in frozen ground. So it's little ways of cheating to make things easier on yourself that um, really make farming a lot more cost effective. Now, um, the only tools that we use on the farm are a rake, a poo picker, a hoe, and a spade. That's, that's it. Um, oh, and the wheelbarrow, of course. So straight away, I don't have a lot of money invested in that. Things like a uh, harrow. This is our harrow here. Um, come around here and have a look at this, Lou. So it's a pallet that costs nothing. This is a bit of an old seat belt. It's just rubbish. Uh, these straps here, I paid four euros for them. Uh, and these are another couple of old broken straps I had. So just little tie downs like that, they cost absolutely nothing. If you lash the tires together with the tie downs and lash them on the pallet, you then have a harrow. Um, tires, uh, a lot of people don't actually realize this, but um, it costs to get rid of tires. So when you change the tires over at the tire shop, normally there's five bucks per tire added onto the, the, the cost of your new tires, which covers getting rid of them. So any tire shop in the world, like literally pretty much any tire shop in the world will be happy to give you four tires for free. Be saying a word about who the shit is when they know in the name. I'm from an era that's golden and now that I'm older, I'm happily showing my age. One thing you know is whenever I'm dropping to anything trendy is going to change. When I get back in the picture, I always return to the top. I know my place. to the hay all year round. Um, hey buddy, I don't have any cows. Man. So by having the hay feeder out uh, all year round, when there's two foot of snow on the ground, the horses don't need rugs, they don't need anything. Um, horses are like a fire, they sort of keep themselves warm from the inside out. So this rugging stuff, I'm mean, sure like on an old horse or a sick horse or something like that, yeah they might need a rug. But this is a six and a nine year old horse in the absolute prime of their lives. You can see how fat they are coming out of winter. And it's literally just because they have unrestricted access to cheap, uh, low sugar, high fiber hay. Um, so rugs, I don't know how many people have got a million rugs in a shed in varying sort of states of decay. Uh, we don't have that. So again, that saves us a heap of money. Now the boys will eat one of them in 10 days. And for 10 days, we pay 30 euros for one of them and that's delivered. You can see like three euros worth of hose there. It's a 25 uh, euro um, ball cock valve, uh, and it came without the um, the ball cock, unfortunately. So go and have a look at the ball cock, Lou. Fortunately, unfortunately. because no, no, fortunately, because they um, paid us the money back. Oh, did they refund yeah, it? Yeah, they did refund oh. it. <laughs> okay, so there you go. That's free. So I've got an apple shroll bottle there, held on with two cable ties. And that's an eight dollar, eight euro um, water trough, and Marengo is quite curious by it. So basically, with the, the refund of that, um, you're looking at ten bucks for a trough. Because it's such a short line, uh, I just put insulation over that in winter, and it doesn't freeze. So we have permanent water in one of our paddocks. Now, why don't we have permanent water in all of our paddocks, Louisa? Making an because awesome we place. don't need to. Because we don't need to. That's right. Economy of effort. That's noisy. Let's move away from that. Let's come up here. So, <clears throat> by not having a heap of troughs, by not having a heap of hose, <laughs> it's funny because your whole side is white with the fur that is just rubbed off because it's spring. So that saves us a lot of money there, but there's another reason why we don't have troughs in all of the paddocks. And that's because all of the paddocks are connected to one another. And it means that the boys always have access to this. This is their year round paddock and they have to walk if they want water. They know where the water is. So if we come up here, we've got our cheap little hut. This cost us like hundred euros. 
there's about a hundred and I think 180 euros worth of mats come through and of course we have water in the corner just if we're locked the boys in for whatever reason come on up here so if the boys are way down in that bottom paddock there or all the way up in the back of the top paddock they have to walk to get their water the more walking a horse does the better it is for it you know they should be walking up to 20 30 kilometers a day just walking around the farm in a perfect world over winter obviously the boys aren't moving around especially when we got a lot of snow so they're basically just in this one paddock here and we store our horse poo underneath the uh, eaves there on a big tarp and when it comes time to spread it out we'll take it out into the paddocks with the wheelbarrow then of course harrow it with the, the little suzuki but we have our big veggie beds here now as far as i'm concerned anything that's a problem that can be turned into something useful it's a resource it's it's not a problem so we grow our veggies in these lovely big veggie gardens and all of that horse shit is free fertilizer so on top of the horse shit, there's uh, 70 euros worth of tan bark and like dirt from the garden center and we're ready to go. So that's a pretty sweet garden bed for 70 euros. So again, economy of effort. So this is a paddock that we've just uh, harrowed after having had the boys in here for one month. Um, we let them shit all over the paddock, obviously. And each time we feed them hay, we feed it in a different spot around the paddock. Now all the grass seed that's in the hay falls out and the boys basically stomp it in when they're walking around eating their grass and eating their hay and all of that kind of stuff. So we've got new grass seed from the hay all over the paddock. We've got shit all over the paddock. We run the harrow through and we've basically had the boys stomp in our grass seed. We've spread our grass around. We've spread the leftover hay around and we've spread the horse poo around. And it is a hell of a lot cheaper than getting fertilizer in. And with fertilizer and stuff like that, I mean, if you're dairy farming and you're growing rye clover and stuff like that, that's one thing. But for us, we want low sugar. We want a variety of herbs, grasses, all kinds of stuff that's good for the boys without filling them up with sugar and potentially making them go lame. So as an Australian, there's only two things that really scare me. Um, Klaus Schwab and fire. So we burn all of our stuff uh, right at the end of winter and as you can see under the hay she come in here Lou come in nice and close so here's some you can see grass seed that's come out of the hay um, I sweep out the hay shed and all of that shit that's on the bottom of the hay shed that's just dust dirt little bits of moss and stuff like this crap and of course heaps and heaps of grass seed now we purchase from one hay supplier um, he's just down the road I've seen his pastures and it's absolutely perfect for the horses. It's organic too. It's organic too. So there you go. Organic hay. Um, you can see the seed head here. And of course, all of that seed I've put down. We've got lovely fertilized ground from where the, um, where the fire was. Now I rake that in. So I run the rake over it a bunch of times. And then I cover it with, um, with hay. The reason I cover it with hay um, is because of the soil temperature. Uh, firstly, um, you're better off not running your paddocks right down in summer. The reason being, um, if the grass is a bit longer, the soil temperature is actually a whole lot like, um, well, in summer it's cooler, but in this time of year, the soil temperature stays up and it also really keeps the moisture in. So if your grass is about this long, all of that moisture will stay in uh, in summer because it's cooler and it's in the sort of shade a bit. So by putting this over your, your grass seed, you're also going to stop um, birds from getting the seed and also um, keep it like warm and juicy, ready for germination. Um, this thing here is another cool thing that you can use. Uh, soil um, doesn't, well, until it's 10 degrees, your grass isn't really going to grow. So it's really easy to tell what temperature it is now. So we've got 13 degrees for soil temperature. Can you show me again, please? 13 degrees. Yeah. So perfect for germination. So when we get our next bit of rain, we really should see a heap of growth. The problem is I've, I've got rid of pretty much everything I don't want. I mean, the horses don't eat that, but 
that's about the last kind of thing I can find in the paddock that, I, that I've got run off. Um, just everywhere I go on the farm, um, I take my hoe, <laughs> my hose, <laughs> um, and I especially focus on chipping the thistles in autumn. Um, I like to have everything gone in autumn, so that means uh, come spring when the new stuff comes up, it's, it's just easy to just pick them off as they appear. So for spring and autumn, they're my main weeding months. I don't really do much in summer or winter. Um, but yeah, I get rid of the thistles, uh, ragwort, just because I hate thistles. Like people say they're good for horses and stuff. Yeah, I walk barefoot everywhere, so, well, except now, I've got shoes on. Uh, so I want the thistles out of the paddock. I want any ragwort gone. And the other thing I get rid of is dock. Um, but we have around about, I don't know, probably a hundred different types of grass and herb here. So we're really, really lucky in our pasture because it's just natural. It's, I mean, the whole farm's completely organic. We fertilize with horse poo. We don't put lime down. We chip our weeds. We use no pesticides. And again, economy of effort, you know, we're not spending money. So with our fences, again, economy of effort, um, we're just using just the old, you know, electrical screwy any things. Wherever possible, we use trees along the boundary fence. Uh, and we just use hot tape. Now, a lot of people like to build like a, a permanent strong fence. Uh, for horses, I don't, I don't want to. Um, the reason being the horses, they're like any animal. They'll have a particular way they like to move around the paddock. And if they're always in one corner, well then I can put a gate there for them. So we change things quite regularly. Now I try not to make too much noise going through these leaves, but things are our fence tape. Admittedly, we're in Germany, so we don't have termites and, and shit. Like, if you put this in the ground in Western Australia, the post to be chewed off like 20 minutes after it hit the dirt. But we just use bits of pine, bits of poplar, whatever we find just in our forest. And the reason I use these is because they're not very sturdy. Uh, we have wolves here, and we also have lynx. Uh, and the first time a wolf come into our paddocks, Marengo thought he'd try and kill it. Uh, and he ran through two fences, broke them both, chasing and trying to kill the wolf. If I use tape, firstly the horses can see it, and they can see it at night. Uh, if I use wire, they can't see it, and wire can kill horses. If you have high tensile 2.5mm wire on your property, you're an absolute muppet. It's also more expensive, and you need to have a good post to put it in the ground. So this post costs nothing. The little electric thingy needs a 30, 30 cents Euro each, so they yeah. cost nothing because we have a forest where we because can get we it forest. out. Yes, that's true. It is. Um, but you can you can get you can get sticks pretty much like most people. You know, wouldn't have too much trouble finding some sticks. Um, and yeah, the, the tape again, very cheap. And if it breaks, come here and have a look at this, Lou. You can just tie it back together. It takes two minutes to fix. And as I say, this stuff it is cheap. It's effective and the horses don't kill themselves if they crash into it. So that's why I choose to fence the way I do. Uh, and I don't even dig, dig post holes. I just hit them in with an ax. It's, yeah, it's, I mean, they're, they're only in like this far. So again, economy of effort, nice and cheap. Now in total, um, I think we've spent under a thousand euros on the property uh, since we've been here. We have six paddocks. Oh, Jilly's playing with a stick. Of course she is. Um, all of those paddocks, uh, they connect to what we call our home paddock. We've got our bottom paddock, our top, uh, um, top paddock, our back paddock, and our guest horse paddock down there. And we also have the race in the middle that helps us connect there to there to there. Now, we use those four main paddocks on a one week rotation as our plan for this year. So eat, the horses will have a week in each moving around. And when we take them out, we'll just harrow the paddock to just to spread the shit around. So, you know, it's all gone by the next time they're in in three weeks time. So that's what we do. It's not a huge property, but it's a very well set up property. Everything is used and all of our stuff is cheap, recyclable and horse safe. So you can honestly, you can set up a horse property on absolutely next to nothing. It's my cheap, cheap ideas. <laughs>